Now, from the Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill, it's the 20th Annual Candleton Bowling Championship. And competing for the $10,000 grand prize are Paul Berger of Hopedale, who qualified with a 479. Jack Sanek of Quincy, who qualified with a 449. Jeff Atkins of Springfield, who qualified with a 439. Skip Easterbrooks of Plainville, who qualified with a 426. And Jim Flynn of Salem, who qualified with a 423. Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to Candlepin Bowling, but not just our regular show. This is the big one. I'm glad all of you folks are here and all of you out there who are listening in and watching. Now, uh, we have some gorgeous trophies here, which have been uh, presented by Din Brothers of Boston Holyoke, as they do for each of our weekly shows. And we have prize money in addition, of course, to what I've already mentioned, because each of these bowlers, who is very capable, as you know, of making marks, will have exactly the same opportunity as they do each week, and that is to make more bonus money. So we are guaranteed to give away at least $20,000. And working with me, and it's a great pleasure to have him here, is last year's champion, Dick O'Connell. Hi, John. Thank you for inviting me here. Oh, we're glad to have you here. You notice? Did you ever get a standing hole like that? Not in a long time. <laughs> Well, you got one last year because you had a tough guy with the last two matches against you, Tommy Olster, who didn't make it this yeah. year. Uh, it's unfortunate that uh, he didn't make it, but he is a great competitor. Well, you know what it's like for each of these guys because you've been here and you've been a champion three times. You're going to sit with there, there with me and talk about it. And so you and I can shake hands here and let's get going. <laughs> This Candlepin Bowling Championship show is sponsored in part by the Massachusetts Bowling Association. It's a stepladder, as you know, and so we will start with Jim Flynn of Salem. And he will be bowling against the number four seed, Skip Easterbrooks of Plainville. Five pin standing. Dick, what does he look for here? The one three? Hey, yeah, he's going to look to go through the one three pocket here. Yeah. He hit it a little outside. I would imagine he has a few butterflies right at the moment. Mm, no wonder. So he begins with a ten. Now the winner of this match on this step ladder then will move on to face Jeff Atkins of Springfield. He was the number third seed. Jimmy's a good young bowler coming up in the ranks right now. Uh, he bowls with me in the world tournaments. Uh, he's been consistently averaging 126, 127. Yeah, we were impressed with him because we weren't expecting him the day that he came. The man who had, oh, the man who had originally been scheduled to be in that spot was unable to make it, and Jim came in second in the roll-off, and so he qualified for it. Skip, I'm not too familiar with. I've seen him in a few tournaments. So, you know, I really don't have a, a lot I can say. I just haven't seen him bowl that often. He did well. He's from a little town, Plainville. And as he told me himself, oh, what does it feel like when that happens? Oh, it's a terrible feeling because your next ball, you're saying, geez, i got to knock down at least seven or eight more of them. It, oh, no. Even, ooh. For a moment... And apparently was a lob, as Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee, holds up two fingers for the box. That, that's a tough box, especially to start off. Sure is. Well, he come right back with a nice ball, though. 
For a moment, I thought it was going to be a strike. He has a high single of 183, a high triple of 454. His league average is 123. Oops. Oh, he missed that. that if, he had, if he had made that one, it would have put the pressure back on Jimmy, even with the two box. Well, now I'm sure he will probably sit down and say, okay, Skip, let's just settle down here. Jimmy Flynn from Salem. He has a high single of 203. Oh, that's, that's why. Uh -huh. Nice ball. High triple of 489. His league average is 125. That's why he has a high single of 203. Oh, there he goes. He, he got that extra pin to fall for him in the corner. Gets a lot of action on the ball. Yes, he does. That's set up pretty pretty well for the spam. All right, let's see how Skip does now. He's had time to maybe settle down a little bit. I think Jimmy's uh, adrenaline's running a little bit now. He was given the opening and he's taking advantage. All right, you've got the four horsemen right side and the five pin. I'd shoot right into the one three pocket. Hopefully the ball goes back, takes out the five and the rest run down. Went to the left side. I don't know whether he did that on purpose or not, but. I don't think so. I think he was probably shooting the pocket. At eight. Skipper's going to have to do something here, Don. He's, we're getting halfway to the game. He'll be running out of boxes shortly. Uh, he's, he got a break there. He got that 10 pin to fall for him. So if he go in the one-two pocket, he should be all set. All right, let's see if he can. It'll really be good for him if he does. Oh, that hurts. A little heavy on it. You know, the interesting thing about these two guys is that when Skip Easterbrook came on and qualified with his very first appearance at 426, then he won the next week at the 392, and when he lost, he was beaten by Jim Flynn. Is that right? So this is their second meeting. Wow. So maybe psychologically that may have something to do with it, too because Jimmy's already beaten him this year. Jimmy's right on the head pin right now. Okay. He's got a tough tough break there. It's kind of hard to, to split those three over. He's, he may want to go outside and come off the wall. No. Uh, no. That's yes. exactly what he did. Usually, when, they, when the bowler uses the wall, uh, particularly somebody who fires the ball like you gets a, a bigger action and it comes across with a little more force. Yeah, he he hit a little solid, but it, it came off the wall for him very nicely. Oh. All right, a deuce. Oh, that was a nice try. He'll just try to pick one. Eight, and so far, Flynn has the first bonus money for three marks in a row. Well, Skip, it definitely has to do something now. Oh. This shot can be played either way, inside or out. If he can split the two, the seven should go. If he goes outside, the ball should carry into the seven. But he had to hit the two pin. But I see that leave. Sometimes I think that's almost impossible because it seems to me that if you do hit the uh, two pin, that it's going to go off the sidewall and not get back to the uh, mm -hmm. seven. That happens. Uh, that was another nice ball he threw, but again, he didn't carry that extra pin, leaving the seven pin. He, he has to try to split those two. Send the three pin across. 
what he needs is a spectacular one. I thought perhaps at that moment he might get the uh, six and, and uh, ten and also get the six to go across. Uh, that would have been a pick-me-up. I think Jimmy's feeling pretty confident about this string right at the moment with four boxes to go and a 25-pin lead. He gets another mark here and he's on his way. The lovely old half Worcester. Right. I, I think he just wants to grind out a, a nine or a ten out of this box. Oh, what a nice shot. How about that? That was that was a nice shot. You don't see that too often. Look good both ways, live and then replay. All right, six. I think this time he'll try to split him and send it across. He tried to. Yep. Boy, when you figure that that ball is being thrown 60 feet, it's amazing how accurate you guys can be. A seven. Okay. Four more boxes for Skip to do something. He does have the consolation, which I know it sounds strange to say that it's a small consolation. He will get $1,000 just for being, having made the show. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that at all. I mean, just be able to say you made the show hey, is, is an accomplishment in itself. Yeah. That was a very nice shot. He, he caught that three pin up high and the ball come off the end of the wood and went across. Yep. Looks nice on replay too. He could breathe a sigh of relief there. Oh, yes, big nine. All right, now, single pin. Now, that piece of wood is to the left. Is that going to be difficult? No, actually, he's set up pretty good there. If he goes right at the pin, he, he shouldn't have any trouble at all. The only possible way he could probably miss it is miss it completely, a cap of wood. All right, two in a row. His last uh, three or four boxes, he's been right on that head pin. Tough psychologically to uh, re react after the start, I'm sure. Right. But he's getting. Oh! It oh. is a big ball. Jimmy Flynn. Jimmy answered that call. The skip started to make a run at him, and he answered it right back at him. One oh four plus. First ball gets him seven. Yes. Nice shot. That's it. He hit it perfect. He had to hit it right on the end of the wood and just push everything straight back, and that's where he hit it. 104. Jimmy's going to have a nice strike now. 114, I think. So. Another nice first ball. You know who's watching this very intently is Jeff Atkins because uh, <laughs> that that will be a an exciting match. All right, Skip. Skip gets seven as his fill. Skip but it's not going to be easy. Skip needs to hit this on the inside. Hope the ball goes down. He missed a head pin. Jeff Atkins just reached across and shook Jim Flynn's hand. Mm -hmm. That should be an exciting match. Jeff is such a such a competitor that it's and a former champion. And a former champion. That's that's a big plus also. All right, got it.
and eight more. So, as I said, Easterbrook has uh, $1,000 coming to him for uh, being the fifth seed and not moving on. And uh, a big one coming up between Atkins and Flynn. The score in this one, 133 to 109. Okay, now the winner of the first, Jim Flynn of Salem, will move on, and now he challenges our number three seed, Jeff Atkins of Springfield. All right, Jimmy, go at it now. Go at and it. Go get it. Jimmy wants just to grind this box out, start off with a, a nine or a ten, preferably the ten. It's a tough way to start the strength. All right, Bill has over on the left, two, four, and the nine. Eight bucks. Jimmy threw a nice ball that last string, so starting off a new string, he, he probably uh, rushed himself a little bit, and he should calm right down. It's barely. That wood rolled out a little bit, but it shouldn't really cause him that much of a problem. Yes. Okay, Jeff Atkins, our number three seed and a former champion of this particular five-string championship. I mean five-person championship. He has a high single of 211, a high triple of 514. His league average is 135. Jeff is probably one of the toughest competitors I've ever had to bowl against or with. A little too strong that time. Yeah, he's still got the butterflies. Just starting out first ball. You got to get rid of that bad one. Maybe two bad ones? <laughs> He's hoping to get a nine out of this box. And I'm sure. Anything above that is a bonus. So and that nine. was it. I would say he's loose now. He got that first box out of his system. Mm -hmm. It's always the toughest. All right. Jeff's got a, a fairly good spare leave here. All he's got to do is split the two on either side, and that should carry for him. Yes. By the way, Jeff has the highest league average of any of the five who are bowling here tonight. 135. That's that's pretty good bowling when you can average 135. You're looking at 400 every time he gets on the approach. Absolutely. Jimmy's going to want to split these two and the wood should go back and take out the 7-8 uh, and the ball should carry down to the 10. All right, let's see. It did. <laughs> I think you've uh, you've thrown a ball or two in your lifetime. <laughs> well, <laughs> in, in the last uh, 35 years, I've thrown quite a few. Sometimes a few too many. A little too full on the head pin. Yeah, Jimmy's been right on the head pin. Uh, 35 years. So you started when you were five, huh? <laughs> Uh, yes, actually, I did. <laughs> okay. Oh, he oh. turned away on that one. He was disgusted with himself. He almost lost that, too. Get a stick, Jimmy. Get a stick. He's going to want to get at least one of them here. He's got to calm down. If he gets mad at himself, he's going to lose the game before the game's over. Yeah, you do have to control your emotions. That's true in any sport, particularly individual competition. Uh, especially against a veteran like Jeff. Jeff takes advantage of people that do that to him. One pin now. The three. Jeff will go right at that pin. I think even if he capped that wood, it would still go. It's at that much of an angle. <laughs> he caught the side. It doesn't matter how, it's whether it goes down or not. That's right. 
Again, just missed a head pin. It's going to yep. want to go in the one three pocket and hope the pin flies back down to the seven. This is what I was talking about where these look like, to me, like they might split and one go on each side. Oh, he played it outside, but almost got it off the wall. Mm hmm. Nine. Nine. Jimmy's got to settle back down here and get back to business, get right back on that head pin again. Oh. All right, what do you do with this? Tough shot here. You have to play the four pin on the left-hand side. And, and hope that it catches the eight pin and then shoots across. He made a liar out of me. He made a liar out of me. <laughs> well, that's the way he felt comfortable, apparently. It was a great shot. Look at it again. Oh, excellent shot. I would have I never shot it over there. I just learned a new shot. <laughs> I think a lot of people did. Oh, make a nice shot like that and then go through the middle. That's tough. Spread eagle, or dread eagle, I guess. Right. Again, you just pick a side and just try to split them. A good action, gets the 10 for the box, and I think he'll be happy with that, other than the fill. Okay. We've gone through six boxes for Flynn, and now Jeff Atkins has a chance in the fifth and sixth. Jimmy's getting his spares, but he's having trouble filling them. He's gone through the middle a couple times now. Oh, beautiful ball by, by Jeff. I hope I don't jinx him, but Jeff is probably one of the more accurate bowlers on one pinners. I was just going to ask you about that. Yeah. I was going to ask you if the one pin that you have to get starts to get skinnier and skinnier as you're standing up there. Myself, personally, Don, I would rather shoot a one pinner than anything else. Really? Yes. Two pinners seem to be my death because I, I always seem to take out the front one. Yep. Just missed the head pin. Oh, he got a big break there. He's fortunate he has wood in back now in front of the eight pin because if not, it would be pretty difficult, I would think, to get, unless you got maybe sidewall. Well, even that, that wood's not turned exactly to go straight back. Yeah. That's what happened. He didn't hit the, the head pin either. Uh, he missed the head pin a little bit. That's why it ricocheted off. That's what you have to do is keep getting the tens. You don't lose no pins with tens. Okay, going now into the seventh and eighth. It's a 12-pin lead for Jeff Atkins. The whole difference of the match has been the, uh, the difference of the fills. They both got three marks. Just Jeff has filled his bigger. Oakland fires again. Jimmy's Leading looking the one, for seven, and nine. Jimmy's looking for a big out here. No, no room for seven boxes anymore. In order to put the pressure on Jeff, Jimmy's going to need to sit on a on a mark here. He's he's got the spare leaf. He fires a nice first ball, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He throws a lot of strikes. And we can see why. And the single pin pickup for the spare. That's a big mark for Jimmy. You know, being down 12 pins, yep. running out of boxes, he had to do something to turn the match around. Now he, he's hoping that Jeff doesn't get a mark. Just right on that head pin again. 
Everything down except the 10. The, the shot should go. Wood right in front of. If it hits it anywhere to the stripe or to the left, it should go. Yeah, you don't want to go right side if you don't know how close or how far away it is because obviously you could spin that thing out and not necessarily uh, have the ball carry through because it might go in the gutter. That's correct. If you're going to spin it, you want it to spin it in. Oh, just missed the head. Hey, again, he got a spare lead again. His ball breaks that in that direction, so if he catches the head pin either side, he should carry that. Most right-handers would be having the ball break a little bit to the left rather than to yes. the right. But he uh, puts that like backspin on it. Beautiful. Great bowling, and you can see why he is a former winner of this, just as yourself is. You yourself is. You can see why he's had a 500 series, too. Yes. That's very accurate. Uh, there's, a, there's a break. Eight is the fill, and he's looking now at the two pins on the right of the one and the three. He's got to split the, uh, the three six here. He should be in good shape. Ooh. Oh, he caught it. He's got it. He, he caught that real thing, but it come off the wall and just nicked it. He still needs another big mark here. Okay, too. this is the final box now for the challenger in this particular string, the, who was the winner of the first. This is uh, what some people call the old bucket or whatever, but to me it's a diamond. Yeah, <laughs> it's a tough shot too. Sure is. And, as I say every Saturday, Diamond wins again. It sure does. Wins more times than not. Yeah. Nine in his final box. And a 122. Very respectable string. I mean, he had five marks. He just had some trouble filling them. He kept punching through the middle. Jeff held onto that ball a little bit too long. Jeff needs to split the 1-3 and hope the ball runs down the four horseman and the pin takes out the back one. Ha-ha! Oh, came right back again. I think, uh, I, th I think Jeff wanted an extra $50 in bonus money. <laughs> he got it. And look at that pin rock. That's when you stamp your feet up at the uh, up at the line. Be, this could be a tough shot. Jump up and down. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. That foot's rolled up. Nice. Got it. Before I could say it, I was going to say I would shoot it off to the left left hand area there and avoid that front foot. Very nice opening string for Jeff. Fifty-two to one twenty-two, and Jeff Atkins will be moving on to face our number two seed, Jack Sanek, right after this. Now Jeff Atkins becomes the challenger as he is challenging the number two seed, Jack Sanek. Jeff just coming off a nice string. I think his confidence level is right up there right now. I would think so. Made a lot of fine shots. This shot here, I, I shoot right down the middle and catch that front wood on a left-hand end. I hope something comes off the Four, wall. Four, five, six, plus the corner. Oh, yes. Two shots I called wrong for me. Yeah. I'm entitled to that, though. That was pretty. Done perfectly. Like I say, Jeff's confidence level must be way up there right now after coming off a 150 game. Well, Don, I think I would play the wood down there by the 10 pin. 
Okay. To the left of the stripe. He lost nope. it. Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee, indicates that uh, that is a nine because he caught the piece of wood that was in the gutter just before coming up to uh, get the 10. Now here is uh, Jack Sanek, our number two seed. High single 199, high triple 472. His league average is 125. Jack is a very, very good bowler. His, uh, his dad was an excellent candle pin bowler on our show many times uh, during the early days. After all, we've been on the air for 38 years with this program, and he's sitting over here to our right watching right now as his son. But oh, too bad. Jack didn't get it. I, I bowled with his father long before I bowled with Jack. How about that? I never knew Jack was bowling until, I'm going to say, eight, ten years ago. Okay, for a ten. Now, uh, if you notice something glistening on the third finger left hand of Jack Sanek, that's a brand new wedding ring. Let's see, June or July, I can't remember. I guess it was July 22nd when he got married. All right, there's the diamond again, right side. Jack throws a type of ball that takes this shot out uh, more frequently than not. Yes, <laughs> I guess so. So a spare for Jack Sanek in the second, and Jeff Atkins had one in the first box. Jack had a great year up in the World Tournaments this past year with his teammate Paul Berger. They won the uh, World Tournaments. One, three, six, and nine. No wood. Jeff needs to uh, split the one, three, and hope it carries out the, uh, the six and nine. Just missed. Just missed the head pin. Jeff's got to forget about that one pinner and, and get back on his game. Here's a special reminder to all our Channel 5 viewers. Starting September 9th, throughout the college football season, our regular Saturday morning shows will start a half hour earlier at 10.30. That's 10.30 in the morning this fall here on Channel 5. Jeff's Little got the, triangle. He's got the triangle there. Again, if he splits it on either side of the, that front pin, it should carry for him with his type of ball. Ooh, right down. a little bit too full. I think he's thinking about that one pinner a little bit. Probably. They had to figure yeah. out when they have a plank of wood in front of them. An eight them. box. <laughs> Jeff is employed by the uh, post office department, and Jack Santa coming up now is a uh, controller at State Street Bank. Uh, that was a nice ball by Jack. Would Mike come up and help him? Eight is the fill. Jack's going to go right at that pin to the left-hand side and hope the ball carries down to the seven. Thank you. And it did. Push it straight back. Jack throws a big ball here. He's going to put Jeff in some trouble. That's a tough One, shot four, seven, and ten. That's a tough shot down there. That wood up there against the head pin is it's not angled at the direction you want it to go in. You could leave those corner pins. I see why. Okay, we will be right back. The score at this moment is uh, Sanic 54, Atkins 45. On the line, Jeff Atkins. 
Jeff has got to get something going now because uh, Jack is starting to take command of the string. It's only uh, nine pins, but you know, you're know still looking at a mark and a half if he uh, gets a couple more pins. You know. What's he going to do with this wood? Is he going to use I play it off to the left there and, and try to... Oops, again, he makes a liar out of me. <laughs> I'll have to talk to him after this. <laughs> I should know better. I, I've bowled with Jeff for probably 10 years now, and an eight. whenever I thought we should play a shot one way, he's gone a different way. <laughs> we already mentioned Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee. Don Riley is our contestant coordinator and statistician, and Tim Michelle is the alternate referee. Jeff has got to split these two and send that front pin across to take out the four pin. Those are tough when you have to go work on a lateral basis completely. Oh, it's awful tough. It's like uh, threading a needle. Oh, yeah, I can see that so many times. Of course, I've only watched about several hundred, I guess, <laughs> over, or several thousand, I should say, over 38 years, and... Uh, that, to me, is the toughest shot of all if you're trying to move the, the uh, four over to uh, get the six or whatever. Okay, Jack Sanek is on the line now. He was leading. Oh! Jack's throwing a marvelous ball right now. After throwing that strike, he, you know, the adrenaline's going in his favor right at the moment. If he throws another mark here, Jeff's going to be in some trouble. That must feel, uh, I, what should I say, deflating when you've just had a strike and you go get a spread eagle? It is. It is. It is. I don't know how to describe it, Don. You know, you, you feel like you've got everything going for you, and all of a sudden you go through the, the middle like that. It just takes all the wind out of your sails. And then you get an eight box, too. It doesn't take all the wind out because usually you say something. <laughs> Sixteen pins, it's only two marks. It's, the game's not out of reach yet. Jeff's got to do something here, though. He's got four boxes to... Four boxes to go. Just missed the head pin, but he got a big break out of that. All he has to do is hit the head pin in this shot, and that should... Yeah, shot, that should, should take care of everything. For a minute, I thought it wasn't uh, going to go. I thought he hit it too thin for a minute. No wonder he's wiping his brow. Well, Jeff needs to put a big fill on this. He's, he's hoping he uh, throws a strike. And he almost Almost. Did. Almost. All right. Jeff makes this shot here, and... He's put the pressure back on Jack again. That pin's looking mighty small. Uh -huh. Even uh, a bowler as successful as he probably breathes a sigh of relief when he picks up uh, a single like that. Oh, this time it's not entirely a spread eagle. He also left the eight pin in back. Again, I shoot the three to the right and hope something happens. He did. Now, he, Jack's hoping to get a nine out of this box. Settled for an eight, but he's hoping for a nine. All right, an eight. That's, that's turned the momentum a little bit now, Don. Now down to a five pin lead. And opposite to spare. Opposite to spare. So he has another open box. We've got an even match again. He thought he had a strike, and most of the folks here did, too. All right, Ralph Stewart is going down and taking a look. Again, we're down to those final few boxes where those pins are looking awful small. There's the hand for Ralph. No, you 
that ten pin with that other piece of wood that's sticking out there, that's a little tricky, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> it ended up being tricky. He was sticking out enough that he hit it, so. Yeah. So he, he lost the shot on that one. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to say at the angle of that deadwood there mm. in the gutter, it's enough to throw you off a little bit. Sure, because uh, it was sticking out, and once he touched it, both then it became a nine uh, box. Both bowlers have missed a ten pin for spares this this match. <laughs> Jeff got another big break. One three pocket, and that shot should should go. Seven. Jeff took the lead back. Yeah. Ninety nine. Oh. He's going to be dreaming on that one too. That's two two marks. He's missed this string. And this is uh, elimination type of time. So you don't have a chance to come back again. No. He's disgusted with himself for missing that. Now he still forces Jack to get a mark. He's hoping uh, he gets another mark here to force Jack to get two, though, or at least a real big mark. Got a chance. That should be almost like a one pinner. He hits that front pin. That would, in between them, that should go. No problem. Two, five, and eight with some wood. Ooh. It's two shots in a row. That could that could cost him the match. And he knows it. You could tell as he turned around. Two shots in a row and three shots on the match he missed. Nine. One eighteen. One eighteen to beat, and he's already at ninety-six. Jack needs one mark. One mark with a small fill. This looks like this could be it. It sure does. Now the five pin. That would come out a little bit, but it should still go. It should still push right straight back. Yes, there is the spare. Jack knows the, uh, all he needs is a small fill and a 10 box, and, and he's a winner. Yep. Three fill and a 10 box. That's all he needs. All right, that, that gives him seven. Gives him the string right there. And yes. So Jack will move on to face Paul Berger. The final score of this one, 123 to 118. Now for the big prize of $10,000, a two-string roll-off. And leading it off is our top seed, Paul Berger. The reason for that, obviously, is it being a two-string roll-off, he will be bowling last in the next string. This, this is right. Down to the grand finale. We've got two bowlers that are very good friends with each other and teammates in the world tournaments. So. Well, last year at this time, you were in that spot right there leading off at the against Tommy Olsen. Now, in, in the same situation, Tommy and I have been friends for years, and it's hard bowling against somebody that you're, you're friendly with all the time, you know? But somebody has to win and somebody has to lose, so. How much difference does it make uh, when you know, for example, with your, the top seat here, that you're guaranteed $5,000? It makes a big difference. You're walking in here, already you win. You know, you have nothing to lose. You have everything to gain, so. And that, of course, is uh, Paul's situation now. Exactly. I know your competitive juices will say, I want to, you know, I want to win, I, and I, I really do. But, uh, and you and Paul have experienced that, and uh, you've done it three times, 87, 88, and last year, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Jack Sanek starts off and leaves one pin standing. And the, the, hot, the hottest one, Don, was the very first one against Peter Flynn. 
Yeah. yeah I, I can. That was when I had to make the seven pin, and that pin was awful small. <laughs> Jack started off good. Starting off just like he finished the last spring. Something must have distracted him. Smart to stop and take a breath. Jack's getting an awful lot of action off the wall right now. Six was the fill. We uh, should not feel sorry, of course, for Jeff Atkins. He did get $2,500 for uh, losing that particular uh, match against uh, Sanic. And, of course, Sanic is in the same position now as, uh, as though he had been the top seed. He's guaranteed $5,000. All right, now Paul Berger comes up. We had the one... Uh, spare by Jack Sanek so far in the first four boxes. And again, I remind you that this is a two-string final. Paul just put a, tried to put a little bit extra on that. Took out two. He's hoping for a big out here. I would think so. Play it to the safe side where all the pins are and hope you get eight, nine out of it. Tough all ball. right. That's five. Whole no. thing with, the whole thing with the final match here, Don, is he does have two strings to come back. So if he starts off slow, he's, he's got room. All right, spare leave now with the one, the two, and the four. I'll go right in the one-two pocket. Nice. Paul, of course, holds our record for the highest uh, three-string total, his big 500. And that was something. He threw that against our alternate, Dave Richards. That's right. Dave has been here. Of course, he got a long distance to come. We're here in Haverhill, and he's across the other side of uh, 495 in Plasto, New Hampshire. He could have walked here. Ooh. Jack almost got a little bit of action there and come back for him. Ten. Jack's hoping to, to match up the mark with Paul. Keep that uh, 11 pin lead. Got to shoot the three pins. Split the three and hopefully the, the seven and the eight will, will carry out. The wood may help take the eight. Nope. Didn't work that well. I'd shoot down in the corner and hope to take the seven and eight out off the wood. He only got one of them. Okay. After four, we're going to pause, and uh, we'll be back again right after this. Paul Berger on the line. Only think, now in the fifth and sixth boxes. I think both bowlers now have uh, gotten rid of any butterflies they have, and we're going to start seeing some bowling now. Pretty good call. <laughs> <laughs> I think Paul has uh, settled down. He started off a little rough there. Boy, don't you hate to do that? We talked about it before, right after. Uh, you get two marks in a row, and then all of a sudden you do that. I don't know how he got by the head pin like that. He's showing his frustration a little bit, which is quite understandable. Oh, baby, it turns out to be a five box. Yeah, that's two five boxes. You can't let your emotions get to you. That'll hurt you every time. Well, in a way, it's like a, a pitcher who's being hit. That's right. The harder you try, the, the worse you do. Jack splits the one, two, this should carry. Jack Sanek. Hey, he's got it. That's fair. <laughs> Keeping score for us on the electronic scoreboard is Mr. Keith Williams. Rob Crowley is on a board for the folks here. 
It's a tough shot for Jack. Myself, I go on the left-hand side of the wood, way up in the cap, cap area, and hopefully the wood will carry him off into the tent. Yes! Oh, two, that's a pretty shot. I'm glad I was able to finish my description before he made it. <laughs> I just uh, love to watch you guys. This is uh, one of the great joys of my life for doing this program because you guys have so much skill. And as I point out over and over again, I hope I don't get boring to the folks, but it is a small ball, 60 feet away and skinny pins. And yet you guys fire it down there and make those shots, play all the angles. It takes a lot of practice. A lot of practice. A lot of frustration sometimes also. And I think that's what Paul's going through right at the moment. A little bit of frustration. Well, in addition to a lot of practice, you can practice forever if you don't have skill. This is true. And you won't get any better either. <laughs> Tell me about it. I, I'm, I try to do that in golf. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and practice. Uh, people ask me if I play golf. I say, yes, I hit it and I chase it. <laughs> okay, Jack Sanek coming up now. This is the first of two final strings to decide who's going to be our $10,000 winner and perhaps even more important, the champion. Jack's got a, a spare lead here. If he splits those two pins down the middle there, the, uh, the, the five and the nine, that should carry the wood over there. And it did. Jack's on a roll now. Another Jack. $50 in bonus money. Jack gets in a groove. He usually stays in it. It's on the head pin. Five. That was the bill. Now is he going to make it four in a row? Nope. Just missed that front one. Jack wants to get a 10 out of this box, and he'll be happy. Good settle for the nine. Yep. Has a 19 pin lead. It's uh, almost three marks worth, so. Paul looks like he's pressing a little bit, trying to get a little bit extra on the ball and coming in a little bit solid. One, seven, ten. Does he get but the bonus money for this one, Don? No high-low jackpot here, no. An eight. Paul is looking a bit frustrated. He, he sure is. He, he knows he needs to mark this last box just to bail the string out. And it's not going to be easy. No, it's not. He's got to split the three and hope that the, uh, the three pin carries over there to the four seven. Almost did it. Good try, but I don't know how much consolation that is if you if you've missed it and you hear good try, good try, Dick. Doesn't that, that probably doesn't make you feel too much, much better. Anything Jack gets now, you know, he's he's up against 17. Anything over 17, he's that much farther ahead. And he's throwing a nice ball. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is cumulative, so. Uh, whatever his lead is, uh, he'll be carrying it over into the second string, obviously. He's, we've seen a lot of spares miss tonight. That could have been a very, very big spare to him. Yeah, you probably can't have uh, a too, too big a lead against Paul Berger, can you? You can't have too big a lead against anybody. In order to get to this show, you have to be able to uh, throw some marks together, and anybody's capable of throwing a triple or a, even the four, the four bag is done. We've seen them on, on the show quite a few times. Jack wants to just hit the head pin and hope he gets a nine out of it, nine or a ten. Nope. 
So it will be 118 to 99. And uh, then we'll be back with the final string, the one that decides who is going to be our 1995 champion right after this. Here we are. Here we are. It is the the final one. This is the one where the defending champion, I shouldn't say the defending champion, the top seed uh, will be, which is a little unusual, coming from behind and down by 19 points. Oh, he just missed so that close. shot. Just missed that shot. I think he was trying to hit that wheel a little bit higher than where he hit it. Ralph Stewart has called time as uh, Jack Sonic has pointed out to him that there is a ball in the right-hand gutter, which uh, Ralph could not see from his spot over on the lob line on the right side. Now there'll be a hand for Ralph. Well deserved. When you crawl underneath there, he's especially, not a kid anymore. Especially with all these people watching you. Yeah, right. Jack had a chance to, to really put a lot of pressure on Paul at the end of the last string, and he, he let, him, let him loose. 19 pins is very catchable for Paul Berger. He has to split the 1-3 pocket here and hope the ball carries right down to the 10 for him. He had it outside and did the same thing. He just shook his head. I think that uh, he, he made it, but maybe not the way he had to plan to make it. I think he was shooting it inside myself. All right, here's Paul Berger. He's our number one seed. Paul needs the big start. He needs to have this fail. I shoot right at the pin. Which he did. Got it. He's hoping to throw another real big fill, nine, nine fill or a strike. That puts him right back in the ball game again. Uh, last year when we were in the uh, last uh, two strings, right? you had a pretty big lead right. going in uh, yes. against Tommy. But I still couldn't let up against him. No, <laughs> I wouldn't think so. And Paul has two in a row. That's a big mark for Paul. That's the start Paul needed. Now we're down to a 12-pin uh, difference here again. Each with a bonus ball to be rolled here in the second box. And Jack waved instantly that he was going to miss the head pin on the right side. That's a big break for Paul. Getting just four. And not oh, so close to marking, but has left the 10 pin. Jack's got to settle back down into his groove again. He was throwing the ball real nice that last strength. Looked like he rushed that first ball. Got to take himself a deep breath and get back in his game. That's exactly what he did. He felt strike that time, but it just didn't happen. Left one pin, the eight. But you could tell when he delivered it, he was saying to himself, ah, that, that's it. It should be elementary. Well, they keep swapping marks like that. And Paul's still behind uh, two marks, so he's got to get two extra marks from Jack. And that's not going to help him at all. Four horsemen right side, and back of that, the five and eight, and over on the left, the four, seven. No wood. Paul just wants to get the 10 out of this box, and he's got to start all over again. Oh, you hate to leave two pins. And he's leaving too many pins up there today. I believe he had a couple of five boxes the first string. There's 10 pins there. Almost a strike. 
That would have set up a little bit of an angle, uh, Don. Might make it difficult, huh? It, it could. I would have to play that off to the right-hand side of the stripe. See what he, you mean. He, he caught it to the left, and it didn't go through for him. Those hurt. Okay, we are after four boxes. Uh, bonus balls still to be rolled by Jack Sanek, and uh, Paul Berger is at 47 in this third string. We'll be right back. Jack Sanek on the line. This is the fifth box of the second and final championship string. He's got a tough lead here. He's got to go in the one-two pocket and hope something happens. He's got, he's got the lead, so in his position, I'd shoot the head pin and just go for broke. A six box. The fill on the spear was only three. So that hurt. Yes, it did. That did it. What a way to come back. That's the way he had to come back. Paul needs to have two marks here. One to, to match up the strike and one to gain on the six box. Gain 19 pins down with six boxes left. You're running out of boxes. And a diamond that you're looking at. Good. That's a big, big mark for, for Paul. He's hoping to load it up here. He throws a strike here, and he's gained a lot of pins back. That's what he was looking for, you could tell. And he certainly didn't want the split. Can't quite see that wood very well, but a lot of times we shoot way down in the corner and hope something snaps over. He just shot at the two, it looked like. And it's a nine box. Working on a strike to first. Wow. Spread eagle. Four with the first ball. Jack just wants to get three more, make sure he gets a decent fill, and ten for the box. Now he'll go left. Gets a three to the left. Maybe he might take the the 10 pin out. He was trying to. He was trying for the 2-4 uh, pocket. He's had three marks here, but his uh, his fills haven't accumulated to, to very much. He's only six over his box. And the total pin ball, of course, is from the two strings. And now let's see what Jack can do here in the eighth. Oh, 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 oh. He got that wood to come right out of the gutter and go across. Boy, that was a big one. He knew that, too. You could tell by his reaction. He knew he needed that one. There's a little break for Paul. Now that wood is frozen in there for him, so he hits to the left-hand side of the five pin. That five pin could go right straight across to the ten. Let's see if it works. No. Nope. Started a little high. Boy, you can see the frustration on his face. Anytime he misses one, it's, he heaves his shoulders and takes a deep breath. Paul has to do something here. Down 13, 14 pins. Up against the mark. I don't know what he can do with this. No wood. Got to split the one-two pocket and, and hope that the head pin takes out the ten and the ball takes out the seven. Two full on the head pin. He's obviously pressing, and of course anybody would be in that in this position. The only, he can, the only thing he can do now is sit back and watch. You know, he's going to sit back and hope Jack uh, has a couple open boxes, and, yeah. and and Jack's hoping that he's going to get another mark to close the door. 
Jack leading by 15 at the moment, uh, plus whatever he uh, gets on this. Oh, make that 25. I think that's pretty much going to close the match out. I would think so. He's 25. Now working on a strike with two bonus balls. Oh, you know what he wanted there. Uh, he would have lo loved to have had a double there. Right now he just wants to get a big fill. And a big fill right now for him would be a seven. He, he got the seven. If he gets the yeah. ten here, it uh, forces Paul to get a double strike. Oh, baby. It would appear that Jackson, in fact, Paul Berger has already basically conceded. He has just taken Jack Sanek's hand. And now Jeff Atkin comes over and does the same thing. So Paul Berger's final two, he was our top seed. And Jack Sanek as second seed. A spare and a very proud Mike Sanek and Mrs. Sanek in the back row here looking down at their son. Now they can go on another honeymoon. <laughs> Excellent bowling by Jack. Jack kept his composure throughout the whole match. Yes, he did. And Paul Berger comes over and congratulates Jack Sonic. The rest of the bowlers do. Dave Richards, who is our alternate, is over there doing it at the moment. And in a sense, we have a new champion in the sense that the top seed did not uh, win. It was the uh, second seeded Jack Sanek. But he has won, and he has won the $10,000 first prize and the trophy that says he is the champion. There are the final totals. This Candlepin Bowling Championship show was sponsored in part by the Massachusetts Bowling Association. Okay, we have uh, a little bit of time, so we're getting an opportunity here to speak to, well, let's go one, two, how about if we stop it? All right, here's Jeff Atkins. You are a little bit warm, aren't you? Huh? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. I let a few get away. Oh, all the, yeah, the collar a little bit, yeah. Well, you, you can't afford to throw away those ducks, uh, not in a match like this. I know. And, uh, you know, Dick O'Connell and I were up there watching, and we were watching the frustration of... You weren't alone, you know, in frustration yes. there on shots that you have seen. But listen, we have a little bit of a... a trophy here from Jim okay. Brothers. Very pretty, isn't it? Yes, it is. Nice okay. one. Okay. And... Uh, how about twenty-five hundred dollars? I'll take it. All right. All right. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, Mr. Paul Berger. A tough one. Paul. Well, you're a little bit warm, aren't you? Huh? Well, a little bit warm, but uh, that's about as uh, as poorly as I can ever remember throwing a pole. Oh. And uh, I can't take it away from Jack, though. He pulled good. He kept leaving the door open. I think he likes me. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I know he respects you, as you respect him. Uh, and uh, it's kind of a tough situation sometimes when you know a guy as well as you do and, and you like each other. But this is from Din Brothers, and uh, you knew when you came in the door that uh, you had at least $5,000 coming to you. That's a nice thing about the top seed, isn't it? Not huh? bad at all. All right. It was great to have you. you. Always. You're always welcome. You Thank know you that. Guys. Okay, champ. Well, you're, you look a little bit warm. You, you didn't have a little work out there. <laughs> uh, you had a little bit of an incentive that's on uh, the third finger of your left hand now, huh? It was quite the year. Um, <laughs> I still have to say my wedding was first, but this is this is very close to being there. It was uh, <laughs> July the 22nd. 22nd. Oh, not too long ago, huh? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What a year. Quite a year. Four in a row and then getting married and then this. It's just... And there's a, somebody sitting in the back there in addition to your wife, but uh, 
uh, a man who was on our program many, many years ago and bowled uh, wonderfully and won championships and I'm sure has been an inspiration to you, huh? Um, you know, my whole life I was following my dad around and you know, it's kind of tough to talk about right now, but I'm so glad they're both here. They are here in their back row and a very proud guy is Mike Santa. Uh, who are going to be here. Okay, uh, Jim Brothers, of course, uh, but uh, in addition to that, there's a little thing like uh, ten thousand dollars, huh? That helps. Only yeah. half is mine, though. You know, the other half goes to the. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? You've already started off that way, huh? Okay. It's incredible. Well, what a feeling. Phil Hamrick is here, and Phil is uh, going to be representing the Massachusetts Bowling Association. I don't. And uh, he has. I don't have any money with me, but uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, you're guarding that very closely, eh? It's nice giving uh, other people's money away. Congratulations, Jack. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you, Phil, too. Uh, tell me this. I remember, uh, a lot of the folks out there probably don't remember, but I remember when you were a little boy, if you will, when you used to come, when your dad was bowling. And I never saw anybody get more nervous than you did when your father was bowling. You used to go hide your face and whatever things weren't going well for him. Well, you know, over the years, you sit in the back or you're bowling. Sitting in the back is so much harder than up here. I mean, up here, you're sweating, you're throwing the ball. You get mad, you can throw it, take it out on the pins. But back there, you have no control, and it's so much harder back there. I'm sure he's got butterflies and a little nervous right now himself. So Knowing Mike, I think maybe he does. <laughs> yeah, just there, he's waving now. Uh, you know, I noticed tonight when we came in here, what kind of an attitude did you have? Because you had, of course, your, your beautiful young bride here and your father and mother. Did that make any uh, pre extra pressure? Well, besides my wife and my mother and father, I have my mother-in-law and my father-in-law, and I probably have 20 or 30 cousins around here. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, in a one-string match, when I bowl Jeff, anything can happen in one string. And then in two strings, I mean, Paul and I, you know, are very good friends. You know, we were on the world team together. That's right. And, yeah. you know, it's, you just bowl. I mean, we bowl our hot soap, you know, for that 40 minutes we were bowling. We were bowling the pins. We weren't friends. Now I, you know, I'm certain we'll be friends forever now. So, I mean. Well, in addition to that, I know what, what, it is tough when you like a guy and when you have bowled with him many, many times. And I realize that. But at the moment that the match is on, all you can think of really, you've got to think about yourself and what you can do. Absolutely. It. Absolutely. I mean, you know, friendship goes aside for that, for that certain amount of time that you're out on the lanes. Um, you know, you're bowling the pins. I mean, Paul wants to win. I want to win. You know, we both wanted to win. Everybody here wanted to win. And, you know, I was very fortunate to get it. Well, I'll tell you this, as you well know from watching cattle pin bowling for a long time, you are the big man now for a year. You One are year. the you are the champion. I hope to be back sometime in my life. Again. Well, we'd like to have you too. And Phil Hammer feels the same way. I'm sure. Okay. Remember now on Channel Five this fall, 10:30 on Saturdays. We'll see you there. Okay. Bye bye. Great. Thank you, 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 you both, you both are right.